So, continuing off last week's progress, I'm running it now trying to get it up to temperature. So the old fire trailer is out, it's too close, but I'm trying to step back to talk because otherwise you won't be able to hear. So there's a the three that port that comes off the valve cover and then runs down the back of the motor and typically when you have blow by you see a lot of uh, white smoke coming out of there, there's nothing coming out of there, or the dipstick. So I think she's a pretty solid motor. the old girl holds together. Seems pretty solid though. Starts up better than some new trucks. So I'm getting some uh, temp in the brake saver but no water temp yet and they put a second gauge down here which leads me to believe this first gauge died and neither gauge has moved I don't think. So I'll continue to run it but I think I did fix the uh, Jake got it unstuck. My daughter made me this little alligator for it. Yeah, so that works real good now. So now the real work begins. Well, not really, but just more of the same. Still a pretty long list of, uh, of items to go. We'll uh, keep picking away at it. Oh, I wanted to share as well that uh, some people in an earlier video when it was running said, oh, your fan's not turning. And it doesn't turn until it actually gets the temperature. There is a switch if you're climbing a hill and it's getting pretty uh, pretty warm. Uh, which one is it? Fan, there we go. So you hit that, and there you go. It's the fan, but it's obviously not the temperature yet, or the temperature sensor's not working. It's all air controlled. Because it hasn't come on yet. That works. Oh, very pleased overall. Uh, I could just sit here all day looking into this thing first. But I probably best get started on the, uh, the rest of the items because as nice as it looks, still, uh, still not quite ready. Oh, there we go. Something must have jiggled loose. Uh, we got some water tank now, so that's cool. I love this little girl. She's quite an engine for this relatively small truck, so it just shakes it. So I was talking with my cousin who owns an incredibly large farm behind Creek and runs all kinds of equipment. He was actually the one that got me started in trucking and put it in my blood. Actually driving an old Pete 359, just like this, a gray one. And he was mentioning that uh, he just redid an engine in his Kenworth and it was about 30 grand to do the, uh, the platinum kit. And have it all uh, all tip top. So this old A block mechanical, if I did it myself with uh, maybe some help with a uh, from a friend who's a heavy duty mechanic, I may be able to do it for for ten or twelve. But hoping it doesn't need it. He did mention though uh, that I should probably pull these valve covers off and just take a take a direct look at how much slaps in there uh, in the rockers and just look for any any valve or lifter wear that kind of thing. Uh, I'll probably do another oil analysis and see if there's any material in there, but I think doing a direct look is going to be worthwhile. And I've got the manual, so I know what all the specs are. So just put that on the to-do list. So I was out at Fort Gary trying to see if there was a, uh, a knockoff non-Peterbilt hanger that wasn't going to be $1,500. And he goes, yeah, I can get it for you. It's got the, the wear plates on it. It's about, I think it's about 500 each. And then I had the bread idea. I said, well, can you get replacement wear plates? And you actually had a couple in stock. So check this out, 130 bucks. And it's the, it's the wear plate that goes on the new bracket, but the new bracket is the same dimensions as this one. So I believe that's just going to fit right in there and will give me my height back. So the challenge is going to be now, I guess, uh, take all this apart take this pin out and I'm gonna have to raise the truck up hopefully get enough clearance where um, this guy goes down far enough to get this in 
I'll probably have to clean this up a little bit. And then uh, I don't know if I'm going to drill holes all the way through the hanger and just put a long bolt through or just drill and tap. I'm thinking if I can, I'd like to drill all the way through, but that's, that's going to be a bit of a task. But um, I'm pretty pleased with this though, because now I don't need to replace these hangers. And this, uh, I think, is going to be an economical and pretty smooth way to work. So uh, watch for that replacement in an upcoming episode. So if you recall, um, when I removed this, I took a power divider out and I removed this cross member, one of the, uh, I guess they call it a knee or a support leg that bolts to the frame that goes in there, was cracked. So I was going to try and get it welded, but the fellow I talked to said it's, it's uh, not a very easy task to do. We actually didn't have the equipment to do it. So I went to Pete and to stall and I said, how much for that? Just that bracket and took some took some doing to find it and they actually can get it but if you can believe it it was four hundred dollars just for a little uh plate l bracket of aluminum so off to the records i went uh stopped in at tiggers uh, by lloyd minster and he actually had check this out the whole thing with all new brackets so he was just going to sell me the one but then he gave me a good deal on the on the whole thing i guess not a lot of people come in looking for for old 359 stuff uh, especially old cross members that are just sitting around so i'm going to clean this up paint it and slide it in and bolt it in done easy yeah so just doing a walk around and look at that pop the bead i guess that's what happens when you leave them sit too long so that's a bummer but uh easy enough fix just a pain because i got to take those nuts off and and uh then i have to torque them all back up again fun so I was also looking at, in the never ending quest of replacing old with new, I took this old junction box off the frame and uh, this is the wiring to the back to the signal lights and obviously a little little dirty, a little rusty so I'll probably, well not probably, I will throw this away and get a new junction box and mount the new one to the frame. Um, looking at the wiring though, it's pretty well protected and in the loom so I don't see any obvious damage. I'll probably maybe do a resistance check on each one of the wires and uh, from each end and see if there's any problem but uh, I'm likely going to reuse most of this wiring no need to spend extra money if it's uh, if it's still good and then this is the uh, the one for the trailer uh, wiring so I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this opening here uh, if you recall from probably the first video there was that uh, kind of uh, open grating and I kind of like the you can get a like a stainless steel deck plate which fills this all in and just looks really sharp and then you can get a kind of a housing box with your terminations for your trailer airlines and then the plug for the wiring so that's probably what i'll go with eventually but uh for now we'll probably just probably just leave her open so i wanted to uh, see how that uh, new insulation was going to go on the roof um so it's actually pretty slick you just put it on there and uh, use that little roller but from a noise from a noise suppression and it works really well and then uh, you know, the sun's been shining on the truck you know that uh, that's incredibly hot there and that's still pretty toasty but then uh, by the time you get to this guy you can keep your fingers there so I don't know how much heat this necessarily keeps out it's more of a sound editing but this is uh, this is for the insulation for the heat so they kind of work together have to do the whole cab like that but uh yeah until i get that air conditioning fixed hopefully that helps out with uh keeping it somewhat manageable in here with the uh with the two windows open so they say old harleys don't leak they just mark their spot and i think that's true for cats too so just doing a look here after she's the temperature and she's sweating a little bit of oil out of this uh flange seal there uh so that's gonna Hopefully it doesn't get too too serious because that's a lot of work to get that uh, get that out of there. It's that whole brake saver thing. So, but I don't see any leaks down below. No fuel leaks on the lines, which is cool. And uh, yeah, nothing obvious down here, which is uh, which is cool.
Well, it was nothing major. I uh, was thinking that maybe it was, uh, I didn't know what the sound was at first as the line was starting to go. But it was just this little uh, connector line, which is one of the originals. And you can see where it's split. Uh, it's just the connector between the two uh, windshield wiper controls. I haven't put the new uh, spray controller in there. So it kind of surprised me. Uh, the first, but definitely won't be the last surprise, I'm sure. But it's better to happen here on the driveway than out on the open road. Uh, definitely going to have to have some spare air lines and tools, etc. when I go uh, running out on the open road. But get the bugs worked out little by little. So that's pretty cool. Being able to uh, see the old girl park somewhere else for the first time. And I don't know. Coming up on two years, I guess, in the fall. Almost two years. And, uh, yeah, being able to throw a few gears, that's uh, that's pretty sweet. So, still lots to do. Uh, it's also kind of neat to be able to see what was underneath here. All the little uh, broken tools and pieces of hose and broken concrete. So, I'm going to clean this all up and uh, level it back out. And for those of you that uh, that are wondering and saying, oh, well... He's almost done. The truck's ready to go. It's roadworthy. Uh, I decided to, in the spirit of the my role models, Finnegan and Freiberger on Roadkill, uh, watching all those episodes on YouTube was kind of the inspiration for this whole project. So thanks, guys. Uh, hashtag old junk. And what they do is they always have a list of uh, remaining um, things to do to get their uh, get their old junk on the road. And so I decided to do the same thing. So for anyone who was worried that, man, he's almost finished, uh, there's still a lot of, lot of work to do and a lot of episodes. So we'll keep picking away at that. And then I got my, uh, my daughter's F-150. Uh, the fuel pump died on us and my wife had to come and rescue us and we had to, uh, <laughs> we had to throw it on the trailer and, and bring it home. So I got to get going on that project too. So We'll see. We'll see how much time I can carve out. Uh, everyone's so busy nowadays, but you know, I'm uh, having my own Pete was been my lifelong dream since I was a kid. You know, grew up watching Smokey and the Bandit and and all that, and I just I've always wanted one. And to see it kind of gelling and coming together is uh, is pretty sweet. And you know, the fact that I get to share it with so many people from all over the world. I mean, there's just about if you read some of the comments, there's people from all over the globe that are uh that are watching and following along with this so i just i can't say can't say enough about all the, the positive comments and the uh you know the great feedback and i'm just glad there's so many people out there enjoying watching this uh watching this series and watching me put this old uh this whole junk together but it's uh it's been great so thanks again we'll uh we'll keep on trucking and uh keep on picking away at this little by little